Hello, my name is Tuoms. I work at the hardware testing department here at Microtik. In this video, I'll be going over some threats to password protected Wi Fi networks and how security improvements implemented in our 802.11 access points make them difficult targets. Right next to me, I have a password protected access point. How could I connect to it without knowing the password to do so? Unless the access point is running an ancient encryption cipher, there's really only one way, which is to try to guess the password. This approach is called a brute force attack, and it can, can be done by going through a list of popular passwords or trying all possible random combinations of letters and numbers. So let's try password. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is too slow. Even if I automated it, waiting for a response, or rather a lack of a response from the AP, is a slow process that's unlikely to get me anywhere. But there is another, much faster approach. According to the technical specification for describing WPA2 authentication, when a client device is connecting to an AP, an AP is supposed to send back a cryptographic hash which is derived from the password. This cryptographic hash value is called the PMK ID. And if I store it on my computer, I can check if a guess is correct by running it through the same hash function and checking if the result matches the stored PMK ID. Brute force attacks that don't involve connecting to the target are referred to as offline brute force attacks. One tool to automate such attacks is Hashcat. And when paired with a high graphics card, it can check 1 million guesses per second or more. That's enough to check all combinations of eight lowercase Latin letters in two and a half days. Here, I'm running a tool to request the PMK ID from the AP storing its value and other information in a file for use with Hashcat, then using Hashcat to recover the password, which for demonstration purposes was chosen to be easy to crack. Since the discovery of this vulnerability, Microtik has given users the ability to disable the sending of the PMK ID. It's enabled by default to comply with the standard and not to create compatibility issues but we can disable it for increased security. If we run the PMK ID capture tool again, it will fail to capture this data as it no longer is transmitted by the router. But even without a PMK ID, I could still perform an offline brute force attack if I were to capture a successful WPA connection by a client to the AP. The quickest way to do that is to make sure a currently connected client is disconnected from the AP and automatically reconnects. Tools created to capture WPA2 handshakes will pretend to be the AP and send deauthentication messages to connected clients. Unluckily for this hacker, the HAPEX squared supports 802.11w management frame protection. With this standard legitimate management frames, Com two compatible clients are sent encrypted, just like data transmissions. The malicious deauthentication frames from the hacking tool aren't encrypted, so the client device knows to disregard them. But if I'm patient, I don't have to be able to deauthenticate a connected client device. Reconnections will happen eventually, either because the client device leaves the range of the AP and returns, or one of the devices is rebooted. Let's use the same tool to capture a handshake. Just like the PMK ID, this can be used for an offline brute force attack. But WPA3 authentication is here to save the day. The more advanced key exchange algorithm of WPA3 was designed to prevent offline brute force attacks on captured handshakes 
and the PMK ID is not computed or sent. Here, the capture tool does not recognize the WPA3 handshakes as suitable for offline brute force attacks, and so does not exit after capturing it. If we were to manually save the handshake and attempt to use it with Hashcat, the password would not get recovered. An attacker can only check password guesses by trying to connect to the AP using them. WPA authentication is supported on all our 802.11ax access points, and by default, an AP will only allow 40 unsuccessful authentication attempts per minute. With an offline brute force attack on WPA2, I can check all combinations of eight lowercase letters in two and a half days. How long would that take me with WPA3? There are 26 letters in the English alphabet. The number of possible combinations is 26 to the power of eight. I get 40 guesses in a minute. There are 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. It would take me 10,000 years. But hey, that time will fly by now that I can use my graphics card to play games instead of hashing passwords. In closing, I hope this has been interesting to some of you. If there's one thing you should take away from this video is please use secure passwords. Not even WPA3 will protect your network if your password can be found in a list of frequently used passwords. But if your password is any harder to guess than that, Management Frame Protection and WPA3 in our 802.11ax access points make you more secure than ever before.